There's been a couple. Yep. Yeah, the push five Omni. You gotta do a lot of work, my friend. No, it's offline Omni actually. Yeah, it's Never XSS mind. on the Omni. Offline Omni versus the Wraith King lane. So we'll see how this ends up going. Do you think there's going to be any sort of lane swapping? Sometimes you see the one go to the go to the off lane, or you know, vice versa on the other side. You think they're going to be looking any either team looking for a particular matchup? Um, they want to have the the Slark against the Centaur, I believe, and the Omni Knight against the Wraith King. Mm -hmm. So they're going five men right now. Catch any potential smoke. <laughs> This is so lame with the centaur. You just start the game with like five stacks. He already has two stacks of tangos with the shared one, so he's ready to regen whatever he takes and takes the retaliate stacks already. Ding, 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 mother... yeah, I thought Asta was running there because they, they were expecting him to do it and maybe kind of try to kill him, but he just ended up killing in the background instead. But yeah, they're getting, they're getting the lanes they want, the Omni against the Rave King, Black against the Centaur, I believe. You know yep. Now, right now they've got the Shadow Demon as well as the Rubik up here. So. Yeah, just to take the room because Centaur had to go back to base to heal. They want to make sure they get these two bounty runes in. Yeah, so they've got at least one, but Freeze doing a lot of damage to HYM. No back off, no real exchange, no crazy jump in or anything. Leaves us without a first blood for now, and right off that TM Ming TP's over bottom, so they confirm and get themselves the bounty rune. Move over bottom. Two bonus each. I think the most interesting should be this mid matchup. How it pans out. Because Necro used to beat Kanka quite badly when it was still the pure damage aura. But since the change, I think Kanka has a little bit of an upper hand. So we'll see how ASD kind of plays this out. Two solid mids in the Chinese region. You know, you're, you're here with teams that are one step away from qualifying for TI. So you're not seeing the maybes and the Ori's of it. But, you know, the, it doesn't really matter. I think everybody is, is really set here. And I, I think these are one of the two best mids. Um, in the qualifier that we're gonna see so far. I mean, I, I would definitely agree. Can't really think of any other mid player that would better than those two. You've got oh. Torrent's gonna land, and he might be able to get first blood. ASD, you know, a little bit of trouble. The fire, uh, the fairy fire comes in. He's able to survive that, and they both salve up. Putting on so much pressure already on already. Now you can see this R doesn't really do anything anymore. It doesn't really hurt the the conquer. Very big change. Yeah, it seems to uh, be doing side. just so much right now and harassing ASD immensely. Yeah, and then the side should just be farming. They got really passive lanes on both sides. Oh. Yeah, Couldn't too be much. too much action. <laughs> Really over mid is what I'm concerned about, but uh, we'll see. Because ASD, is just, especially if you can land another turn like that, get ASD low, you get that potential once more where he doesn't have that fairy fire opportunity. Yeah, and he also used the second flask already. Himself. You can see the net worth. He's 400 ahead already on the Kankan. Yeah, so doing a really good job here over mid. Yeah. I mean, you can see ASD is not really comfortable in Necrolite. At least playing against Kanka. He has been eating a lot of uh, free splash hits for no reason. So is it when you're when you're taking a lot of harassment like that, is it more the hero you're up against gives you trouble, or is it both? Is it the hero that you're playing? Uh, you know, if the matchup's not good, or if it's just your ability on that hero. There's so many factors, right? When you're you're one v one like this. Yeah, there really is. And but the, the thing is, Chaiyuan is a Kunka spammer. He plays the hero so much, and he also plays Necro like like a fair bit. So he definitely knows the matchup in and out. You do end up getting get first blood here onto the warlock, but they do have passed the tier one to grab that. 
But a, a quick kill here for Sirius, and a lanes that looked a little bit quiet, but meanwhile over mid, AST hit with the X. A shroud up, but he's still hit by that torrent, still in a lot of trouble. Continuing to chase, has the tiebringer, one more shot, but he pops the south, he should be able to survive now. Bottle coming in from the Kunkka, X on cooldown, so no way to pull him back, and ASD able to survive despite having that torrent land and being down to just a, a minuscule amount of health. But, but despite that, Kanka is still winning the lane quite handily. You can you can see the net worth. He's like 600 amp of head already. In the in the lane, it should be necro favored. My boy Chaiwan coming in hot from Malaysia here. Yeah, we see a lot of a lot of that. It seems like in the Chinese region, it's like four players from China with uh, one one player from Malaysia, and it, you've got this bit of a mix. And Freeze in a little bit of trouble over top. Gets through these trees. It's it's that combo we see together on, on a lot of areas. Like LGD has it with X Nova. So X again with the torrent. ASD in trouble. Chaiwan trying to get another kill here. He's been close multiple times, but again unable to finish off ASD. <laughs> He's handling him. <laughs> It really did quite a bot, but in July, top gets the stun off on the freeze. He's low as well. Both of them are just sitting there quite low and ending up that in July dies as uh, they've got the shadow word on him. And over time, he just finally falls. But again, the torrent landing on ASD over Mitch. I want just continuing, like you're saying, handling the necro. But things get a little iffy as he's back under his tower and really low. One more shot comes in and ASD's the first one to strike blood over mid. Now suddenly goes the other way. He's been bullied all game long and suddenly he solo kills him. Now he's ahead of the network again. Showing us why he's one of the strongest mid laners in China. That's not something a lot of people can do, you know? Like, he was behind so far. And just in terms of CS and experience. I mean, alright. Not a replay to download to learn from. <laughs> So two one early for Sirius, but that that kill is really gonna help ASD get back into this one. Oh yeah, for sure. And he also has the scythe available now. Like I I, I want to see some rotation from the Kanka, maybe on the on the centaur, because the the winning condition for the team is a Slark, and he should really try to enable him as much as possible. So maybe with the next rune, try to get a kill on the centaur, make the life of Slark a little bit easier. Yeah, Sark's doing an okay job, 35 and 3, and they did get that kill on it in July with the Shadow Word of the Warlock, so... Like, they got a kill, he's up in CS. In July, though, he, he, what more can he do in this lane, you think, at the moment? I'm not not too much, really. Like, Slark is generally considered the Centaur counter, which is why they picked it up against him as well. Uh, he will just have to deal with the fact that Slark is going to have mostly free farm. And as soon as Slark is 6, of course, there's nothing you can really do to stop him. And the again. bow, and now they've got the shackle with the Torian landing. They'll get a quick kill on ASD with the rotation over from Bobica. He's always a very mobile four, something we see quite a bit. And something we've seen over his entire career, so I'm not surprised that he comes over mid, helps get a kill, and even up that lane. But he comes back over towards top, so, you know, right away he's looking for more. Shackle, Hex, Freeze looking over. Dark pack, hoof stomp, but they've also got Chaiwan and they'll get the kill on it in July. So Bobica comes over, as does the Kunkka. And they're able to secure yet another kill here for Aster. Yep, and this is what we call a monster shrine. Four here to the low mana, low HP. Going all the way back up to full. And that's the rotation we spoke about. Just make the life of Slark a little bit easier. Get that Ascent Shift uh, permanent agility stack up. Because he's going to be the one that's going to carry you in the end. This mobility coming out, these couple of kills coming the way of Aster, they lead by a thousand net worth, and you check the net worth, it's all three cores on the side of Aster leading the way. Yep, as expected, Omni has a very good lane against uh, the Red King. But yeah, as we spoke about before, mid lane shouldn't be like, like this, but Chaiyuan really like, outperformed my expectations at least. Did way better than I thought he would. Yeah, he did so well over mid, despite that first death, too. Um, you know, he really brought it back. They got the kill right on back. He was farming really well, harassing ASD out of, you know, really low out of lane. And 
forcing him to just salve up multiple times. And now Freeze over top. He does get the leash out with the pounce. So Angel Eye needs to be very careful as they now start to turn it with the hoof stomp. But still, Freeze looking to chase a bit. Yeah, he still knows he has uh, his ult at his disposal, so he's not scared at all. I'm, I'm trying to see what Radiant can do to really pressure Dire. Like, it's a really hard kill on this Omni Knight. The Kanka is quite a hard kill as well. And obviously you can't really kill the Slark with the heroes you have right now. So, what lane are you looking to pressure? It's the real question here, as Radiant. Because right now they're being out-farmed. where they really can move and are, are they waiting for ASD for a movement or are they trying to find it with somebody else say in July move over as he, as he hits level 6 with the stampede maybe they have that opportunity to go on someone I mean right now they're just trying to farm up their own core items I suppose and then probably group up and get a tower push going but it will be quite scary because if they wait too long, that's going to be the Tomic experience and Warlock is going to reach level 6 and then their team foot is so much stronger than the Radiant side. Already choosing to max out the Fatal Bonds as well, going for the full team fight build. He's got three in the Fatal Bonds, two in the Shadow Word, and we take a look as Sirius, they smoke up. Yep, trying to secure the bot tower with the necros rotation. He's got stampede He's to kill close on. the gap too, potentially. Yeah, they need to get this kill on the Omni Knight with the Reaper. And they might very well yeah, get there's it. There's the raid fire blast. They lift him up, they throw him down, they use the Reaper sight. It's not going to be enough to get the kill on AXSS. He'll use his own ulti to get away. They're unable to get that kill. They threw everything in the kitchen sink, it seemed, just to get the Omni Knight, and they are unable to come away with anything. Yeah, it's pretty much the worst case scenario for them because now they can't get this tower kill and they didn't get the the Omni kill either while using the Reaper. So now they're being pressured on three lanes again and they, and they can't really do anything about it. Master. I mean, Omni is such a hard kill for this new Heavenly Grace. It's such a strong ability. This 50% status resistance is so good. Yeah, you saw he was lifted up for a split second. Yeah, I mean, even the Raid King Blast stunned him for a, what, one second? And then the slow immediately tapered off as well. Now they head over towards top, they'll look for in July. They got the disruption from TM Ming to make sure that he doesn't get pulled back into the boat as well as the Torrent. But the Torrent ends up hitting on ASD as they pressure with the Serpent Wards over towards top. Yeah, but at the same time they have two lands free farming so they don't they just wanted to force rotations, and, and they did just that. Now, now they can try to find a good team for the Warlock level 6. That rock, pretty much a, a free team fight this game. I can't do too much about it. Finally grab this Midas on Silar, but you know it's going to take him a little while to ramp up where they want him to be. Is it a little too slow of a build up here for Silar with how fast and how much of a pace Aster are using at the moment? Possibly, but at the same time, he needs to get really fat this game because otherwise, they have no means of fighting this Slark at all. Because the heroes they have are not great against him. So he will have to get to this like three, four items territory before Slark does. So the Midas will. Hopefully, help him with that. As you can see, the X, can... as well as the Hex yep. over bottom, boat comes through, as well as the Torrent. Easy does it. They use the smoke to get themselves a kill. They secured on an HYM. XSS is actually the one who gets credit for that. And then right off that, they continue to pressure these towers. It's really choking out Sirius' spots to farm. Yeah, they just have no moves on the map right now. Like, it's so hard for them to pressure any given lane at all. And the Vortex here is ultimate as well, so they have to be scared of fighting. 5 versus 5. You can't fight into Kanka Warlock as a Radiant lineup, it's impossible. And now they get the free bottom T1 tower pretty much, and they, while just defending all three of their own T1 towers. That'll smoke up though. Then Tone Rubik, coming in from the side. See what they're able to do with this is they will spot Q. He's got Fatal Bonds, that's actually such a great 
skill to steal is I mean there's so many things here that if you're able to steal it are great for this Rubik but the fatal bonds this early on to help you get that extra bit of damage could be nice disruption torrent that's gonna land here on ASD they've also got the boat coming in chaotic offering will come down from Q they're unable to finish off anybody just yet the fatal bonds on HYM as well as in July they look over the golem they'll grab 100 gold on the Silar X pulling back Firefly once more and then a Hex on the low ground on a Sywar, but really nothing coming out of this at the moment. XSS finally comes in and chases after Sywar. The Torrent's going to miss. And now they've got Purification stolen by the Rubik. Yeah, you could say it was a little bit of a sloppy execution by, by Dyer. Like they kind of just used the rock and the boat like individually rather than comboing it up. So, Raiden actually has like a two minute time when they not start pressuring towers, but they have no rock. But instead, they just choose to go back to the lands and farm up again. I'm wondering whether Asylum will go for Radiance to build this game, or leave it up to the Necro. Because Necro without Radiance feels so... Uh, top lane again. Yeah, Freeze taking a lot of damage, forcing that ult out. They'll also rotate Q over. He'll be able to heal, help heal up Freeze if he needs it. And keep him safe as three heroes are here for the side of Team Sirius, but... Of course, with that passive, doesn't exactly need the shadow word. Yeah. When the defusal is up on Slark, Wraith King's gonna have a really hard time this game. As well as Centaur, really. You just don't have the mana pull to sustain the Slark being on you in a team fight. Radiant really needs to use the timing that I have right now. 80 seconds left until Rockets off cooldown. They need to get one T1 tower at the very least. Setting up for bounty runes right now. Try to secure the boundary runes. They look over at Freeze. Takes a lot of damage off the bat. They'll throw the boat down, but with Slark low and the Reaper Scythe coming in, they'll get the kill. They'll take him out of the game for a minute. I mean, this early on, a minute's gonna hurt. <laughs> 15 minutes into the game, you get Reaper, you're just dead for a minute. <laughs> I really hate that ability. It was a level 2 Reaper as well. Yeah, he just hit level 12 uh, like a minute or so ago. So that kind of came in at the right moment when they fought by those bounty runes. Yeah, Sada pushing up mid lane, so he will be protecting that tower. Like, like they're poking a little bit, they can't really do too much to him though. They've got four heroes here, but like you said, we'll see if they're able to do anything. But they are continuing to just go for this tier 1 tower. They'll finally have at least one rotation coming out in ASD. This mid one tower is really, really important for map control, so securing it would be very important for the dire side. And it seems like they're just getting it. Yeah, they get themselves the tower access is able to walk away off that one. TMing also rotated in, so you had three heroes here for Sirius. As they grab the tower. I'm surprised they gave it up this easily. What should have happened is that the Necro just TPs in front and just defends the tower together with the Raven because top was already secured pretty much. And they should have not lost this mid tower for free. Really opens up the map area too. Is very vulnerable. Yeah. The vision, at least right now, isn't exactly amazing here for Aster. But without that mid, it, like you said, it really does open it up. Yeah, they'll they definitely start to posture and uh, enemy jungle here. Yeah, they got themselves the kill on a cube. They'll drop down the Serpent Wards. And now with the boat as well as the Torrent coming in, they rip apart through HYM. They'll also take up TM, Ming, and ASD. Shaman gets a triple kill real quick. Yeah, that was a triple Torrent boat combo. He hit three heroes with both abilities. And, and it's just a spill disaster immediately. They have no chance. Warlock did buy back though. So a, a tiny win, I guess, for the Team Serious side. You know, he, he said he was spamming the Kunker recently, and that was a pretty spot on. Yeah, I mean, he, he knows what he's doing with it here, for sure. And you can kind of see the difference between how he's playing this Kunker right now and a little bit on how ASD's playing the Necro. Just how well he's playing this Kunker compared to the Necro of ASD. And now they'll go in. They've got the disruption onto Freeze. But the Torrent lands onto TM Ming. And it's a quick take out there. They've also got the Shack on ASD. The Chaotic Offering comes on down with the boat coming through. But they've got themselves the Yules. It's the Chaotic Offering that gets thrown back at them by the Rubik. So 
quick steal, quick throw, but it's not going to save the life of ASD. And now Sour comes in surrounded by three heroes. I'm not exactly sure that's the spot he wants to be in. X with the torrent once more. They've got the damage. They'll pop the first life. We'll see if they continue on forward for him to kill him off once again. But with the pounce missing, they don't have the lockdown potentially, but still have the X. And then the fatal bonds and everything coming through with the purification on top of it. Freeze takes out Sour. They get him twice. They didn't need the pounce to leash. They had the X. Yeah, it's pretty much just exactly what Dyer wants. It is long drawn out fights. You get a lot of X marks, a lot of splashes, torrents, slark stealing stats left and right. And on top of that, what I just realized, the, the Kanka built a spirit vessel, which hard counters both the Necroforce as well as the Rave King. And it's not a usual pickup on a, on a Kanka, so I think it's like super smart for him to itemize that way. He's got that spare vessel. He's going for the uh, Radiance next. Yeah. Um, he's really At this rate, he might have it before the Rave King finishes his. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, especially dominating right now. He's only 3-1-6, and six, but he you can feel his presence in every single one of these exchanges. It's getting really, really hard for the Radiant side to do anything. We already saw the lack of damage, and after this team fight now, there's just... That issue is gonna, uh, just gonna become so much bigger. Because they're gonna get more and more tanky, get more and more levels, and the team fight doesn't just become worse. You know, like Radiant still cannot team fight, but at the same time, finding pickoffs is so hard as well because they just don't have damage. You can see how aggressively Dia is playing as well. They don't care at all right now, because they know Radiant has no chance against them in a proper five v five fight. Smoke breaks real quick as Sirius is coming in, but they've got the Hex. They've dropped down the Serpent Wards as well as the Shackle coming in, but the Telekinesis comes up for the Rubik to lift up the Shadow Shaman so he's no longer able to have the Shackles out. They'll get the kill on the Angel. They'll look for more HYM getting low. He'll end up dying second. They'll continue to chase forward looking for TM Ming. And with the X, they've got him surrounded. They'll get the kill. It's a triple here for Freeze, so... They've had a triple on the Kunkka. They've had a triple on the Sark. They are dominating here, up 9,000 net worth, just 20 minutes in, 13 to 4. Yep. And I think what they will do is wait for the Radiance, get the Roshan, and then just soundly try to end the game. Because right now, Radiant has zero fighting chance whatsoever. They can't deal with the Slark Omni Knight combo at all. As you can see, like this, the Slark just runs in alone, and what can they do? They can't lock him down. There's an Omni Knight behind him, who's giving him Heavenly Grace. They got Dark Pact as well. Top tower. So, what, what did you say as, a, as an objective caster here? It looks like it's falling apart. I was actually just about to ask you, where did it all kind of crumble here for Sirius? Because it, it, we, you know, looking at the draft, it looked like they had the lockdown. It looked like they had the ability to put the combo together with the Necro. But from step one in the laning phase, it, it seems to be all Aster. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to as well. The laning phase. Dyer's like. Asta got the exact matchups they wanted. Like I told you they wanted the Stark against the Centaur and then the Omni against the Rave King. And both are matchup counters. If you change the lanes a little bit for serious, I think you'll have a much better time this game. You'll pressure the Stark much more, you'll pressure the Omni that much more. And then you won't have this problem. Your permanent problem right now is you don't have damage. Pressure these two side lanes properly, then this lack of damage won't be such an issue. And I think that's where like already fell apart in the early game for, for Team Serious. Like, right now they have no fighting chance at all. What they need to hope for is that Aster, like, spreads out a bit, uh, a little bit to thin somewhere, and then get a pick off, and then maybe transition into Roshan from that. Yeah, I mean, all AST right has right now completed is this Yules. He's got 2,700 gold, and he switched into a Maelstrom. <laughs> I really hope that doesn't happen. That would be the first time I ever see a Maelstrom on. on... Necro. <laughs> he just switched to it too. We'll we'll see. I, I don't know if we're at that point in the game here for ASD, but he, he has to go buy it. But I think he's not gonna buy it. Otherwise, he would have already. Radiance completed on Kanka as well. Same as Rave King. Yeah, about the same timings. And he goes Shadow Blade on the Necro. And, he's and dead. Oh, they're gonna spot him anyway. Spirit vessel, boat, shackle, quick little kill, but it's stolen by the neutrals. Whew, I don't know why you go shadow blade. What? Your problem is not survive build. Your problem is damage. 
I'm very surprised for that. I didn't pick up. I haven't seen it in a very long time. It's gonna be free Roche for Aster. And then I think they're just gonna march down mid lane pretty much. I don't think Raiden can do anything to defend really. But of course it's a TI qualifier, you know, if you wanna be really safe, you can kind of just choke them in their base for a couple of minutes and then extend the gold lead. Yeah, every, the bottom lane. every best of one is so important that you just can't really give it up and you want to do, you want to play it safe and they're continuing to go after Sylar but the blink came for me in July with the two man hoof stomp they've got the telekinesis onto the shadow shaman they get the kill on a Bobica but Sylar stampede trying to run away it's out of the range of the boat and in July now trying to walk out of this one but he's hit with the X once again with the upheaval on top and well Freeze is able to get the kill on the centaur so one for one trade a three for a four yep this could have been a lot worse because this was the scenario we spoke about where Aster is spreading a little bit too thin they only had two heroes there who could have gotten bursted immediately if like Steerus had committed everyone right at the start, but they were a bit hesitant. So Asta's getting away with one, but I don't think they'll make this mistake again. Because this is really the only way they can lose this game. By trying to get too excited and do too many things at once, you know. You get a little bit ahead of yourself, you get caught out once or twice and all of a sudden, the vibe of the game can completely change. Yeah, especially against the Necro. Like, these heroes are so high level now, they will be out of the game for 100 seconds. Yeah, still just that level 2 Reaper Scythe. He's going into a Silver Edge on this Necro. I, I really don't know what he's thinking at all. They don't even have good passives to disable. Like, really just a, a big surprise there is uh, not something you see all too often on that hero. Uh, and for good reason, because it doesn't do anything for you. Well, they find Tian Ming. They've got the Diffuser to solo him down, but the Disruption's not going to save his life. They've got the Shackle X Torrent. And another quick kill here for Aster making a 15 to 5. Yep. How many bounties did they, did they get? Three bounties for Dire. Gold for my chest. Yeah. Yeah, it's just all over the map, taking those that bounty gold, getting these kills when they when anybody tries to object to them getting bounty earns. Yeah, so there's two things that I can do right now. They can either just run down middle and force it down really hard, or they just take the tier two middle and try to just choke them into their base. Look at that, Rubik. Rubik in trouble, but as is AST as he gets leashed up. It was the Sentry Ward that had him in vision for just a moment, but they've dropped down the Serpent Wards. They'll get the kill very quickly with XSS getting the credit for it. But the whole team was there to kill the ASD once again. Yeah, this, this, the Shadow Blade is just like a... Uh, you do need a BKB. You need something to help you stay alive and deal more damage in fights. Shadow Blade is like... Didn't do anything so far in this game. So... Considering the draft and what we're seeing in terms of results at this point, what would you have liked to see instead of this Necro? As I think the Storm would have been a perfect pickup here because you win lane against Kanka and you can punish the heroes of Dire, actually. But this Necro Force pick so far didn't do anything for them at all. No pressure, no teamfight presence, no pickoff presence. You already have two tanky cores, you don't need a third one. So... But obviously, you know, that's in the past, like, what can you do right now with the draft that you have? I really think the itemization is a huge issue. There's no way you can justify going a Shadow Blade on the hero, ever. In a situation like this. Ooh, they've got the Pounce and the Leech once again, the Disruption comes out on the Freeze, but with the X, with the Touring. They still have TM Ming locked up, a lot of damage coming in on a Freeze, but they get the kill on a TM Ming, they'll drop down the Chaotic Offering. Freeze continuing to move forward. It looks over at Tyra. They've got the shackle coming in from Bobica, but the blink into the hoof stomp. Two man hoof stomp coming through, but I don't know if it's going to save the first life of this Wraith King. They pop him once. They look over it in July. They turn their attention. The boat gets thrown in once again in July with the Solar Crest on top of him. He'll get killed off. That's going to be two down. Mink at three. Sylar gone. That's going to be a fourth with HYM hitting the deck. And four gone. Aster continuing to take the base, and they are up so much in this game. Yeah, it's just a matter of time to see GG. Yeah, and there it is. There it is. Very yeah, well done I mean, by Aster. Clinical, you know? I think Darius, the, four, the first four picks they had was amazing.